Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to paint weeping willow leaves with homemade onion skin ink. For that, I'll meet you in my kitchen in a minute. I'm Adeline Julie B from the Pigeon Letters Design Team and I can't wait to show you this. So let's go. Here we are. Welcome in my kitchen. Make sure every tool you use is for this purpose only. Don't use tools from your kitchen for ink making, okay? So you will need for this ink recipe, obviously onion skins, red and yellow, a stainless steel pen with a lid, a spoon to stir the onion skins, a tablespoon, salt, a container with a lid for your ink, water to cook, glass containers, if we don't have enough with the previous one, fine mesh strainer, coffee filter, a coffee filter holder, clove essential oil, gum arabic, paper for testing, paper to clean up, and sticker paper. Every time you use onions in your kitchen recipes, keep the skins apart and collect them. When you have enough skins, four to six onions, I would say, you are ready to make your ink. So here I'm putting everything in the pan and um, I'm going to add water to cover the skins. Uh, not more than covering the skins. The proportion is very simple. If you put a full jar of onion skins, use the same jar and put two full jars of water. I cover them well with water and try to soak them by covering them with the water. So I use the spoon for that and um, I'm trying to, to have them all under the water. And after that, they, it's ready to, to be cooked. For cooking, I put the pan on the hob and I start with medium heat at first. While this is cooking, I cut strips of paper so I can test my ink to see the shades during the cooking time. And uh, I would say that you have to cook for at least a couple of hours. Remember, not make it boil. It may simmer, but not boil. You have to stir occasionally. Why is that that you, it's better not to boil? Because it can change the delicacy of the tones you could have. The red onions give slightly purplish hue, while yellow onion skins give a sandy yellow color. Mixing them together is going to give kind of a, an ochre. And when it's boiling too long, the color can, can be like roasted, so it's less delicate. While it's cooking, I test the ink with the cutted pieces of paper and I note the time at which I tested the ink in the pan. So, for example, I test the color at 15 minutes, 45 minutes and an hour. While it's cooking, you can add salt. It will help to fix the color. But because onion skins have tannins, the color will fix on your watercolor paper anyway. So, test again the use of your ink after 1 hour and 15, and then 2 hours. When you're happy with the color, stop eating and let it cool down for 10 minutes. The ink is almost ready. It only remains uh, to filter it. It is not longer hot and um, that's because with the lid removed in 10 minutes you can quickly lower the temperature. And so let's first pass the ink into a sieve to get rid of the skins. Then 
pass the juice into a coffee filter. I have to say that the process of filtering can take quite a time. Some of the ink takes a while to filter out. So when you have enough ink in the, the glass container, let the rest drip off. Sometimes it takes up to one whole day. Okay, so now your ink is almost ready to use. While it's filtering, take one of your testing papers with the color and write it down the name of your ink to label it. It's very important as you might keep it in your fridge for a few months. So it's always better to label it. Add three drops of clove essential oil and a tablespoon of gum arabic and stir. Let me remind you that the essential oil helps to preserve it. It's a natural preservative. Don't forget to clean up your tools and area. You are ready to paint with it, so I'll meet you in a minute in my studio to paint the weeping willow leaves. Welcome in the studio and uh, we are almost going to start with the painting of the Weeping Willow. First of all, all the supplies are, are here and uh, of course the onion ink. I have draft paper, two jars of water, a um, piece of lemon, that's for the end, I will show you a trick with that, paper towel, a pencil, this is a 2B, cold pressed paper, watercolor paper. The paint brushes, I'm going to use mainly the wash one. The others are the round, uh, round brushes. And I'm using Peggy Dean's Botanical Line Drawing Book on page 33 to help me to, to make the, all the steps to draw the weeping willow. Because weeping willow naturally fall, Let's think of the layout in that way and let's draw the leaves from the top to the half of the sheet. The space left in the bottom of the sheet will give the impression of suspension and energizes the composition of the drawing. I start by drawing the first stem of the weeping willow. I give a small curve in the middle of it and I add three leaves. When I draw the leaves, the first side of the leaf is curved and on the opposite side I give a wavy movement, a bit like in the stem. I do that for the three leaves I add. While adding leaves on the next step, I redraw a stem where it seems to be necessary to have a balance. When I draw the leaves, I think about the fact that they should stretch out a bit, like a drop or a, a weeping leaf. You must intentionally give the effect that the stem bends under the weight of the leaves I add uh, small leaves and here I'm going to add a leaf below the first one and this gives a depth effect and adds a drawing level in, in the drawing. You've probably heard of the rule of thirds. We are going to apply it because we are going to divide the page approximately into three. The rule of thirds is to position the most important elements of your drawing or painting along these lines. In our case, they are represented by the stems. So I uh, repeat the steps that we've seen before. I add leaves. Always think of the curve in the leaf, the little wave you have to, to make to draw it. And this gives movement. I add a stem. And I'm varying the sizes of the leaves. 
Feel free and try to create a composition that you like. Make sure to vary the sizes of the leaves to give different scales. If you want, you can also practice on a draft paper sheet before working on the original and of course, if necessary, use an eraser. The second important thing after the rule of thirds is to have several layers for your drawing and composition. To achieve this, draw different scales in the leaves and in the stems and give movement. Now, remember the rule of thirds. I'm adding the last stem of my composition. So I'm dividing my sheet in three sections. The interlacing, the superposition contribute to your layout. Build the balance of your drawing by adding in places small or larger leaves. Change leaves and stem orientation to create visual dynamics. Here I draw a leaf under another one to give depth to the drawing. When we work on the composition of a drawing or painting, we are actually working on the eyes of the viewer. The path the eyes take is an often implicit path linked to the way in which, in this case, the leaves and the stems are brought to dance together and through your drawing you guide the viewer's eyes. I repeat the different steps already viewed and I'm trying to elegantly fill the gaps to balance my drawing. I think here it would be nice to add a stem and a few weeping willow leaves. I balance the drawing and I make small additions here and there. Okay, the next step is to give texture to the leaves. Once you are happy with your composition, the balance, the intertwined stems and leaves, the different scales and layers of the drawing, it's time to give some texture to the leaves. For this step, add small stripes, lines in all the leaves. So don't color the leaf, but texture it with lines for the leaf veins. The texture brings an additional dimension, which has the effect of giving structure and kind of a pattern to the drawing. Fill all the weeping willow leaves with those little stripes and we'll meet in a minute. Now we are ready to paint a background with our onion ink. To do this, take the wash brush of the pigeon letters. Dip your brush in the water and then in the ink. 
Test the color on your draft paper. Start to stretch the color from the top of your uh, sheet to the bottom of the leaves and from the bottom of the drawing to the top of your sheet. I decide not to fill the whole sheet to the edges because I want to leave white areas on the sheet. It's like I'm framing the drawing with my colored background. I paint up and down and I do the same from left to the right and vice versa. To add texture to the background, you can apply several layers and to gain in color intensity, um, you can uh, apply several layers as well. So let it dry if necessary af after the first coat. And of course, to go faster, you can use a hair dryer. The first layer of uh, ink is dry, uh, add another one. I leave the ink mix randomly, which will give a texture to my background. By Applying the second layer, you will see a frame in a frame appearing on the edges. This is the desired effect. It gives depth to the background. Leave the randomness in these blends because it will create a beautiful and more texture and deeper dimension to your background. Let it dry. Now I add ink to the leaves. For this step, I take the brush number two. First, I wet it with the water. Then I dip it in the homemade onion ink. I remove the excess ink in my brush on my draft paper. Otherwise, I would bring too much ink to the paper and it could stain. I paint the inside of the leaves. Adding layers still allows you to see the stripes, the veins of the leaves. But somehow the ink has fixed the pencil lines. Now by adding color to the leaves, we will be able to play on small shaded parts and color intensity for certain leaves. By doing this, we add consistency to our painting. For the much smaller leaves, I take the very fine brush, which allows a more delicate work. And that's with the round brush number three, zero. I add the color only in the small leaves drawn earlier.
I take the round brush number two again. I'm going to erase the excess by tapping with the brush. This removes the ink as it soaked into the bristle of the brush. You can also use paper towel to absorb the excess of the ink. I continue coloring my leaves. Here is a recap on the brushes I used. So for very small leaves, take the round brush number three, zero. For middle size leaves, take the round brush number two. And for the bigger leaves, you may take the round brush number 10. With the brush number 10, I'm going to color the bigger leaves. Uh, try on your draft paper and take away the excess of ink. Then apply on the leaf. Do that for the bigger leaves. And now take back your brush number two and fill several leaves here and there. You see that by making these touches of color in the leaf, we add depth and intensity to the painting. When it's dry, you can continue to paint some leaves and add layers with your ink. You can actually add dozens of layers. After these two coats and retouching of the leaves, I'm happy with the result. So I stop and I don't need to repeat any more steps. I let you choose the number of time you want to go through the leaves to darken them. Once you're happy with the different hues and colored leaves, take the round brush number three zero and go over the stems already drawn with your ink. Don't put too much ink on your brush and overline the stems. If you want, leave a few stems without ink on top. It's totally up to you. You can decide that. Are you ready for a little trick tip? Okay, take half a lemon and squeeze it in a lid. Keep the juice on the side. Take the round brush number two, dip it in the lemon juice. See, when I apply lemon juice on the previous color, it fades away. So now go on certain leaves and just 
pass your brush on the paper with the lemon juice. This gives slightly alterated effects and color tints to the painting. In a way, it removes color. That's because, thanks to the lemon juice, which is acidic, the colors can change. It brings a faded shade effect, actually. So go over certain leaves and apply the brush with the lemon juice. This discolors a bit and adds texture. You can also choose leaves that have only been painted with the ink background. The resulting color is a bit bluish and cold, which balances very well with the warm tones of the onion skin ink. Now that you've touched up some areas and leaves with the lemon juice, let it dry. Well, I hope you enjoyed painting with your homemade onion ink and this magical world of ink and color making. I find it so rewarding to be able to create your own colors and paint with it. So let me know and don't forget to share on social media what you've created with this tutorial at Adeline Julie B. I will be happy to share your drawings and paintings. I'll meet you next time with more creative ideas on the Pigeon Letters blog. Until then, cheerio friends!